your pal six feet here and uh, I terribly apologize I forgot to fill in the intro to this video anywho uh, this is a spark plug replacement on a mark 4 golf 2.0 liter non turbo um, yeah so basically we're just gonna jump right into it uh, be prepared also you're gonna need a plenum gasket for this engine so don't forget about that that's kind of important anywho let's get going um, also, be prepared, these laser platinum spark plugs that this thing uses are very, very expensive. So be prepared for about a $60, $65 bill just in spark plugs alone. Okay, so the first thing you notice when we get under the hood is there's this huge ass big aluminum intake manifold in the way. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. Anyway, so the first thing that I've already done is I've taken this clamp off of here, off of the air duct, because I was I already replaced the air filter. So be careful not to get anything to fall down in the mass airflow sensor. Um, we're just going to try and scoop this out of the way enough so that we can remove it without, or we can move it out of the way without removing it. So I don't know what the sensor that thing is, something to do with the PCV. Um, there's two hoses. With these stupid spring clamps so that one there and oh crap this job's already becoming fun just look at it okay so we're gonna pull that guy off of there this is why I hate these cars because there's nothing easy about them so I'm going to pop off the two breathers here and there's another one right here now this one's got an oiker clamp up here so you can't remove it without busting off the clamp so you're going to have to take it off from way down here and this is actually on the uh, oops on the fuel rail I believe it must be the so I'm going to do a fuel pressure regulator. I don't know what the hell it is, but all I know is it needs to come off and it's not coming off. And I'd rather not break it. Perhaps. This day is just getting more fun by the second. fun. Is it good for you too? Alright, so now that those are all off, now just remember that this guy goes here, this guy goes here, this guy goes here, and this guy goes there. Now hopefully we won't have to take off too many more vacuum lines. There we go, we'll take the clamp off, and then we'll pull off the intake tube. Now this is a fly-by-wire, drive-by-wire throttle, meaning that there is a connector. Now that's a coolant line, and I don't want to disconnect that. There's actually oil in here too. Lucky for me. I do not understand why VW uses these damn connectors. I also noticed that there's a broken vacuum line down here at the fuel pressure regulator. So uh, that might be important to fix. It's way over here on this corner right here. As you can see there's the end of it and there's the line right there. So I'll have to put a new rubber line on there. Wasn't too smart not to use a cu another couple inches of hose. So save a few pennies each car and cause major headaches for everyone down the road. Anyhow, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and unbolt these bolts and just tip this thing up and out of the way because the plugs are right here in the front of the engine. But like I said, getting to them is virtually impossible. Um, so we look like we're okay otherwise. We don't really have to disconnect too much. So 
I'm going to turn you guys here. So there's your number one right there. There's your broken vacuum line that goes to the intake manifold right there. Now this is going to have to come off anyway. So somebody <laughs> from Mother Nature already removed it for me. Um, so yeah, basically we have three hex or three cap screws here. One, two, three. And that whole manifold should lift right off. All right, so let's take off the three hex head cap screws, and they are a five millimeter. They're pretty easy to get off. Now just remember they're going into aluminum, so they might be a little stubborn to take out. So it wasn't actually bad at all. Now, remember to be careful not to get anything into the throttle or into the mass airflow sensor. Don't stick your fingers near the throttle, especially when the key is on, and that thing's not disconnected. And I don't know how the hell to disconnect these stupid connectors. They're, uh, the one that I unplugged looked like it was already broken, so, because it doesn't have the little clip inside it. But, like I said, the less disconnecting I do, the better, because there's about a bazillion vacuum lines in this engine. So there are our three bolts. Now, be prepared for an expensive one, because these plugs are laser platinum, and they're like 15 bucks a piece. So, I can see why people neglect the maintenance on these things, because they're impossible to work on. Oh, would you look at that. There's ones in behind that I just can't get to. Oh, Christ's sake. I hate this car already. Oh, look at that. So, they put a little tiny gap so I can get in there. Alright, so we got our little Allen key in there. Unfortunately, I don't have any T handles. Christmas gift, birthday suggest. Actually, my birthday's coming up in a month tomorrow. So, birthday gift suggestion. By the time I post this, it'll probably be long past my birthday, so that doesn't work, I guess. It would be real helpful if I could see in there. Now I wouldn't be surprised if it was a different size. Alright, now we're going to take our pliers and twist. Repeat on the other side, grab our pliers and twist. There we go, and there is our fastener. I'm still really worried about that loud clunk that this thing made. Key. There. You could just leave them in the holes and either grab them with a pair of needle nose pliers or you can uh, do a little juggling act like I just did.
So I'm going to go in from the side. Oh, uh, not really. Oh, right to the bottom. Go figure. All right, well, I'll have to get that one when I get the manifold off. Now, it looks like it's being held down somewhere in the back here, which it is. Of course. That actually might have been that noise. And now it's another cap screw of some sort. Again, not sure exactly what size it is. But I guess we'll see when we get back there. I'm going to guess it's something to do with this one right here. Now this is way back in the back. There are two bolts. That was way too big. Well, it looks like it'll come out with a Torx. This is a T40. I also hate white cars too because you can't dirty them up and make them look clean like the other ones. Alright, so there's two bolts in the back here. They don't seem to be threaded in very tight. I just hate these cars. There always has to be something difficult about them. See, in my honest opinion, German engineering just means expensive to fix. Which in this case, yes they are. $15 a spark plug and you gotta take half the motor apart to replace them. And out of the way, might need to use a bungee cord, but uh, that'll do it for now. Or maybe not. Look at that. I'll take my ridiculously long nose pliers and there we go. Now, just for sanity's sake, now let's pull the plat platinum gasket off. I really don't want to reuse that, I don't really trust it. Now, just for sanity's sake, and safety's sake, always, 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 always stuff something into the intake runners. Because believe me, you don't want something getting down in there. So, that'll prevent something from getting jammed in there accidentally. And... Now we're going to need a bungee cord. I actually need these pair of pliers. I really want those uh, angle. Now I'm attempting to pull number one out here, or at least I think it's number one. It's a Volkswagen, they could do it backwards, I don't care really. All I care about is getting the damn plug out. Or the wire. If I'm gonna take the bottom half of this bloody intake off to get this out, I'm gonna be so mad. One plug it up. Thank God. Mm. Okay, that ain't working either. Oh. 
Don't break the injector trying to do this either. I wonder if I squirt a little bit of oil in there. Or something, I don't know. Cripes. How am I supposed to do this? All right, so where we last left off, we had this stupid plastic thing in there, so I oiled the hell out of it and eventually coaxed it out. So now we have the four posts that sit on the injectors, but that's okay. Um, I got all the spark plug wires out, thank God. They were really hard to get out. So now we just need to use our smaller spark plug socket, I think it's 5 8 Then we're going to have to go down in there with our ratchet, wherever the hell I put it again. And... Oops. Just be gentle with it. No need to force it. Don't need to strip threads. This car probably needs a tightening belt, but there's not, not a chance in hell I'm doing it. She doesn't have that many miles on it, to be honest. Alright. Well, that sucker's pretty worn out. Um, wow, the insulation came off in pieces. That's great. Good thing we're replacing it. Wow, I can't believe that. That could be a problem. Alright, so, I think I'm going to get them all out first before I uh, attempt any actual replacement. Sometimes you may need to use the wobble from the wobble extension. Again, don't force it. Just be gentle with it. These things are very, very stubborn and somehow I doubt they've ever been changed because this is a real pain in the ass to get in there. That's pretty bad too. They look like they're in pretty bad shape. The insulator's not bad on that one, though. It's probably for me trying to take it out after being in here for 12 years of crust and grime and crap. I'm going to assume she rides horses because she just told me it's a, she's been going to the barn and whatnot. So there's a lot of crap and leaves and dirt and stuff underneath it. Anyhow, yeah, well, that one's really white. You can usually tell because just by the way you look at it, you can kind of see how the uh, ground strap kind of slopes towards this way like that. That's usually because that's the way the flame front is going. You can kind of see it there. Actually, you can really see it there. See what I'm talking about? So that's an indication of a worn out spark plug. Laser Platinum. Only Volkswagen, right? Oh, and I just dropped my socket. $15 a plug. I would have gotten them on Rock Auto if it was going to be that expensive. But this kind of came up suddenly, so I'm finally in my shop after about three weeks of hiatus. I'm awfully hungry. <laughs> Yeah, this one shows the same signs, that kind of worn insulator, how it's kind of on a wedge shape like that. 
it's basically all the way that it's it's all about the way that the J hook faces the combustion chamber. So in this case, because they're all worn on the side, the flame front is actually blowing out this way. Because the plugs go into the side of the motor. If they go right into the top of the head, like a hemi head, then you don't have to worry so much about it. Alright, now it's time to put the plugs back in. So, as always, we put a little dab of anti-seize on them. So I'm just going to go down, now this is number one, uh -oh. these are a little tough to get in so, and trust me you don't want to break them off. So don't jam them in there, thread them in nicely, once they bought them out, because these are crush washer style plugs, put our ratchet on, and taking it from the 12 o'clock position we turn it one third, two thirds of a turn. And that's just perfect. No more than that. Alright, so now we have to put in the other four plugs. So again, same thing. I like to take it off my ratchet to thread them in. So somebody had obviously been in here messing around because... Uh, the uh, laser platinum plugs are a different reach and that's what everyone says to put in is these plugs so somebody put the wrong plugs in here initially so again just gently thread it in now these heads are aluminum so do not over tighten these one third, two thirds. You kind of feel them tighten up a little. And that's it. That's all you have to do. There we go. We don't need to pull a plug out of the head here. Now, these two go at a backward angle to the motor, where the front two go at a frontward angle. Because this kind of, this has unequal space runners for the intake. The two in the, there has two on the outside and two in the middle. And the two in the middle are really close together. And the last one, this is a real fun job, as you can probably tell. The people's car is ex too expensive for the people to fix. <laughs> Alright. We'll just put our dab of anti seeds. We don't need a whole lot. Thread it in. Now what you may need to do is once you kind of line it into the hole before you start spinning, you kind of need to uh, put your extension into wobble mode just so you can uh, <clears throat> thread it in properly because it really doesn't want to go in on the angle with the with it without it in the wobble position. Hope that's clear enough. But if you're doing the job yourself, I'm assuming you're pretty tech savvy, since this is not an easy one to do. Anyway, I'm going to move on to the next step. Okay, so now these plugs are actually really easy. They're, each of them are marked with a specific number, and obviously the specific number corresponds with which cylinder they go to. 
So what we're gonna do is, if I can find the fourth one, which is this little guy right here, I'm gonna, now unfortunately I can't really get in there. Here we go. A little bit of uh, silicone uh, dielectric grease in there. That'll make these come off a lot easier. And once you feel it click in, and then you know it's home. Now, again, into this one. These little metal heat shields are just to prevent the boots from getting all squirted up or uh, burned up. Click. And then we'll put this one down in the bottom where it belongs. And now number two. Now these are all pretty intuitive. For once, something is intuitive on this car. Uh, they're all different lengths. And really, you can't reach two, three, or four into one. And vice versa. And all, if you put one on four, it looks really ridiculous. So, yeah, you really don't have to worry too much about putting it in the wrong spot. Uh, it comes out of there. So don't forget to put the wires into the wire holders. Oops, that goes there. Down there. There. And there. And... It clips into that. And then the last one, this big long one, which is number one. This is why the diesel's better. You don't have to change any stupid spark plugs. But then again, diesel's also expensive to fix if you break them. Mind you, any of these are expensive to fix if you break them. So, don't break them. Words of wisdom from your pal, Six Speed Dakota. And push it down until it goes click. And there we go. That's it. That's all she wrote. Um, I think. This is supposed to go up on top. That would make the most sense. And this one goes in the middle. Like that. This one goes at the bottom. And number four just chills. Because it's really, really short. Okay. So, now what we can do is we can put our little plastic vacuum manifold on so the nipple that goes to the actually intake tube goes to the right okay and then we will this just pushes back in because you're going on the opposite way of the barbs it just pushes right in you know gotta love how hard they are to take out and how easy they are to put back in all right now I unplugged the injectors just because I needed to uh, gain a little more access to the uh, that little vacuum rail there. All right, and there we go. So as of right now, I'm at a bit of a standstill because I can't uh, put the manifold back on without the uh, plenum gasket, and I'm not going to reuse that one. That one looks like it's been in there for a while. So. Uh, yeah, unfortunately we're kind of stuck right now, but uh, I don't even know what time it is, but it'll probably be about another hour for me, it'll probably be about another 30 seconds for you, but i got to change the oil in this car, and i got to do some work on my own vehicle, so uh, it's not like it's going to be a long time. Anyway, we'll uh, flash back when I get to the, when I get to the, uh, when I get to the, uh, the plenum gasket. Alrighty, so I got the oil changed, and I got the plenum gasket. Now all I have to do is pull these cloths out of here and we can get started so this is a brand new plenum gasket ta-da all right uh, also got some new vacuum line for uh, the fuel pressure regulator that was broken when I got it um, that 
looks relatively correct. May have to flip it over if it doesn't quite line up right. That lines up a little. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. That is, this is an, this is a shitty gasket. I'm just going to come out and say it. This is a crappy gasket, but I don't care at the moment because I just want to get this damn car done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stick our two rearward fasteners into the You know what, some gasket glue would really come in handy right now. Unfortunately, I don't have any. But what I do have is some Permatex Ultra Gray gasket sealant that will hold this gasket in place. So I'm just going to put a little dab of it here and there. Now, if you do have some spray-on gasket glue, this high-tax spray gasket by Permatex, I think is the stuff that I usually use. Um, that stuff is more, uh, it's very, very sticky. So whatever you do, don't spray a ton of it on, or else it'll, you'll never get the thing back off again. Okay, so now... We can loosen our bungee cord back here and pull our tarp cord out of the way. Okay, still have both bolts in the back, so we're good. And then I'm going to take our three frontward bolts. and try and thread them in. And now, if we look back here, now again, you're not gonna be able to see this, but there are, whoops, sorry guys. There are two bolts back here that I'm going to try thread in. Now the trick with these, don't tighten anything up until every, every bolt is in. Because that will allow you just a little bit of wiggle room. Ow, I just hit my head on the hood. So those are in. I got all three of the front bolts in, and all three, or both the rear bolts are just sitting there. There we go, that one's going in nice. So that's obviously the trick, is to uh, put them in before you put this thing on. There we go. All right, so once you get all your bolts threaded in, then what you want to do is you start by tightening the center down. Then you do this one here. Make sure it's tightened down. Can't get it in there, but I've already tightened it down. Then you do this one here. Make sure it's tightened down. Then you go to the outside one here. Tighten that one. And then you go to this outside one right here. And you make sure that this one is tightened down. So once those are all tight, do not over tighten these. Because you will strip them out. We're going to move back over here to the back of the intake with our two larger cap screws back here. And we're going to tighten... Oops, 
Sorry, everyone. We're going to tighten these guys down. And then this one is way back there. There we go, all nice and tight. And now we put this hose here, this coolant hose, we clip it back into its respective spot right there and right there on the back of the intake manifold. Just like, get in there you little bugger, there it is. Just like that. And now we have to put the air intake tube on, which is over here. So, Actually, first things first, let's get the vacuum hose on. So right down here, you can see where the fuel pressure regulator is. And right here is the vacuum nipple for it. Now, all right, so they sell this hose usually by the foot. This is just regular vacuum line. Um, so that's on the fuel pressure regulator. Leave a little slack. Don't leave this like right tight like it was before. I don't know. It looked That looks like it was done from the factory, to be honest. Could have spent an extra three cents and make things easier, but that's too difficult for them to do. So, so we kind of want to get it up out of the way so there's nothing going to rub on it. Perfect, just the way it is like that. And then over here, we're going to put in the intake tube again. So. I'm going to bring this guy in here. Pop it onto the throttle body. And then this guy's going to pop back onto the, um, whatever it's called. Okay, so there are four hoses we have to connect. This one, this one, this one, this one. Now this one here goes down on this little pressure manifold, or vacuum manifold here, down on the fuel rail. I don't know what it's for specifically, but, uh, I always like to keep it interesting, don't I? Okay. Now I got this big one here by the oil filler. That's usually for EVAP purge. Or uh, EVAP purge, uh, PCV purge. To get rid of the PCV valve, the vent, the vent. Sorry, to get rid of the, the gases. This guy here goes over here next to the throttle body. Now, there's a clip that plugs right in the top, just like that. And I need my big, big pliers. And this one doesn't have a clamp. This one does. Let's just work outside. I must have set it down on the grass. All right. So that's the big one. On the air duct next. I hate these things so much. It's my birthday coming up, so maybe I can convince somebody to get me a pair of hose clamp removal pliers, however they're called, hose clamp removal tool. That would be nice. I don't want to have to sit here and curse VW all the time, even though I probably will still. Good enough. All right, and then this guy right here. And that will join her to the throttle body, like that. And, alrighty. So, and then this last one right here, which joins this, the PCV vent to the intake manifold, right there. Uh, that looks like that'll do it. All our injectors are hooked up, all our spark plugs are hooked up, that connector's hooked up, all the vacuum lines are hooked back up. I got oil in it. 
Pump the hay, let's give it a shot. Let's see if she runs. All right, oh, I can slam my way into the car. There we go. We'll turn the radio off. Even though it's country music. Car sounds good. Runs nice and smooth. Now this cover's not on quite yet because I was doing some work to it, but that noise that was just making is the secondary air injection right here. It'll typically make a little bit more noise. Sounds like it's running nice and smooth. Those laser platinum spark plugs are worth something, I guess. 15 bucks a plug is unfathomably expensive. All right. Alrighty, in summary, uh, this job sucks, as all other jobs on European cars do. Anyway, uh, it's just a bit of a pain in the ass. Make sure when you do this yourself, get the damn plenum gasket. Because I went into this blind and didn't realize and had to wait for parts for a couple hours. Anyway, I've been dicking around with parts guys. They haven't been giving me my right parts and whatnot. So uh, it's been a little bit of a frustrating day. Not necessarily so much about the Volkswagen. Once I got it all apart, it went back together perfectly. So uh, I'll be prepared. Those laser platinum spark plugs are very, very expensive. So... Uh, yeah, anyway, it's all done. Not too difficult if everything comes apart nice, but since that was a bit of a pain in the ass, um, definitely gonna want a bungee cord to hold the intake manifold up. That's a bit of a necessity. If you don't wanna take the thing right out, cause let's be honest, there's a lot of coolant and vacuum lines going here, there, and everywhere. So uh, yeah, that's a bit of a tough one. Anyway, it's not too hard if you're very tech savvy and really mechanically inclined to know what you're doing, you should be able to do it, no problem. If you're a bit more of a beginner wrencher, I would leave that one to the pros. Anyway, I'm Six Speed Dakota. You can find me here, here, wherever, in cyberspace, here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Six Speed Dakota. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. I try to post as many repair videos as possible. Uh, with my wedding coming up in October, you know, it's kind of difficult to find the time to do things, but I'm trying my best, especially on my lunch breaks at work, trying to edit video. Um, that's enough of me talking. Facebook at facebook.com slash 6 Dakota, Twitter at 6 Dakota, and Google plus plus 6 Dakota. Anyway, take it easy, everyone. I got a lot of work left to do around the house and, uh, and stuff like that. So uh, enjoy the rest of your day or evening or whatever time of day it is for you. Take it easy, everyone.